For Prima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomolikai. Joining me today is Suze Uma Nation, the Sun Party's parliamentary candidate, Rashid Abraham Guta, here to discuss the party's policies ahead of the crucial upcoming May elections. South Africa faces numerous economic challenges, including low growth, high unemployment and inequality. So how will the Sun Party lead the charge towards economic emancipation? Uh, thanks, Tabi. Uh, the Sun Party has a guaranteed, tried and tested economic recovery plan that we have recovered from uh, countries that have been successful like China, Germany, Japan and Malaysia. And it's a very simple plan where the resources of the country currently in South Africa, we are well endowed with plenty of mineral resources, but we are exporting it to these countries in its raw form. We should, in fact, be beneficiating it into the finishing product. In 1994, when we inherited this country, there was manufacturing contributed 32% to the overall GDP. But as the years have gone by, the policies have not been geared towards manufacturing. And today it only contributes 12% of the GDP. That is the high unemployment rate. We have allowed our resources to go to these countries that have industrialized themselves and become very wealthy countries. So instead, we should be beneficiating them locally. So if we are elected into office, the first thing we will do is to put in policies to encourage that. And by that, I mean export incentives, wage incentives, shipping rebates. This country has skilled labor, but the skilled labor is aging. They are between the age of 60 and 70 years. So we need to have a radical program to transfer the skills through on the job training of the youth so that we can take the skills from the older people and transfer it to the youth. But we need to start the engine of growth for reindustrialization of this country. We are importing too much than what we are exporting. You see, we, we have, in addition, a very uh, centralized location. We are well located in the world. And we have some agreements in place like AGOA with America and the EU agreement with the European Union, where we are able to export our products without any customs duties. So it makes us very competitive. So this would be one of the major things that we would install, which, uh, which I call structural reform. Uh, you know, so so that we can be able to encourage beneficiation and export. And South Africa's healthcare system faces numerous challenges, including disparities in access to healthcare services, resource constraints, infrastructure deficiencies, and high burden of disease. So, how will the Sun government ensure access to quality healthcare for all citizens? Look, the, the country has embarked on the national health insurance. So the vision is to try and give free health care to people. At the moment, I think only around 15% of the population is able to afford uh, medical aid. And uh, that's an indignity that is unacceptable uh, to most of the country. So the Sun Party will concentrate on what has been done up to now and look to how we can implement the, that ability to have free national health insurance for the country. Because... It's an imperative. The country needs to be healthy, but the, the current uh, health system is failing. So we need to look at it in more detail to see where the deficiencies are and how to improve it. And while there are existing social welfare programs in place, there are gaps in coverage, accessibility and effectiveness, which hinders efforts to address social inequalities and promote well-being. So what strategies will the Sun Party implement to close those gaps in the country's social welfare? Uh, one of the major social reforms we want to look at is what uh, other countries that have applied it successfully is uh, is the education system. You know, like Australia, they have a system where from the age of six weeks, the child is being taken care of in, in a highly regulated child care facility centers where they are taking full care of the child so that the parents can go to work. Today, the mother and the father need to work. So in these countries, they are able to afford them that subsidized health care until the child grows up and goes through primary, secondary, and tertiary education, till they go to university and qualify 
they have uh, equal access to education. So irrespective of the income background that the family comes from, they are able to uh, get that uh, subsidized childcare and education. And then when they start to qualify and they work again, then they pay back into the system, you know, the, the, the taxes. But if you earn low, you can even have the free education. And if you earn higher, then you pay for that. So that it circulates so the next generation of their children can also benefit from that. And Rashid, addressing land reform and promoting prosperity through equitable access to land and resources is essential for addressing historical injustices and promoting economic empowerment. So what strategy will your party be using to stimulate agricultural productivity and support rural development? The Free Market uh, Foundation has found that there are 7 to 10 million pieces of land where there are actually houses built on it. The owners, they own the house, but they don't own the land. So the low-hanging fruit of doing a quick transformation of giving people ownership of land, which is an important aspect to give them dignity and to give them a sense of, you know, into the economy, is to transfer the title deeds into their names. So, so far, only about 10,000 has been transferred into title deeds at a low cost by private initiatives. But I think that if the government gets involved and prioritizes it as a policy, then we can do it immediately. And your party is in partnership with Africa United Congress, who are part of the Nazareth Baptist Church. Can you tell us about that partnership? Shortly after we qualified for the elections there were many parties that failed to qualify due to the uh, you know the policy uh, they, they were having some requirement signatures and they failed to comply with that so they looked at the value system in our party of god consciousness and they felt that they could align with our value system so they approached us and they uh, requested to 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 join us in our in our mission to go and contest the current elections. So we have a alliance with them, with a possible merger, if we see that, uh, you know, we can go forward with that in the future. Uh, but the main reason is alignment to our value system, and, and it met up with our uh, as well. And what is your view on coalition governments? And if elected to parliament, would you consider going into coalition with any of the parties? Well, we are open to look at it, you know, in terms of coalitions. But what we think that this time around, uh, there are so many parties there and there could be too many parties that uh, come into office at the end of the, uh, with the 400 seats that are in the National Assembly. So we would like to take a nuanced approach. And by that, I mean that we want to tackle it on an issue by issue basis. I believe that in South Africa, Seven out of ten issues we will all be common in. If we want to reduce unemployment, we want to reduce poverty, there's nobody that's going to argue against that. It's only in selective items like regarding foreign policy and how we react or, or BEE and that those type of issues might have differences. But in, in the broader context, we are all working towards a common goal in this country. You know, the coalition should be of one party, which is one country. You know, South Africa is, is the main concern. We should stop playing party politics and should concentrate on the on the on the country at first. Put the country before party. And lastly, Rashid, in brief, why would you encourage South African voters to vote for you on May twenty ninth? Uh, I would like to encourage them to, to come to the polls and vote for change. It's time for change in this country because for the last 30 years, we've given enough opportunity to the current leadership and some of the larger political parties to ensure a change. But uh, unfortunately, the life of everyday citizens are deteriorating. And the reason why Sun Party is a great opportunity is because I'm a business person and we have studied and experienced uh, growth models of other uh, countries like China, and we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We have a guaranteed, tried and tested economic recovery plan. We are so confident about it that we, we can promise South Africans that there will be a better life for them after the five years if we are given a chance in office. And if not, we are prepared to even step aside.
and allow someone else to take over. But we are very sure that we can do this task. That was Rashid Ibrahim Gatta speaking to Prima Media's policy about the party's policies ahead of the crucial upcoming May elections.